Hello, everyone. Dr. Yonit Arthur here. You are on The Steady Coach, and it is my great honor today to bring you this success story interview with Prasanna. Success stories are, for obvious reasons, some of my absolute favorite pieces of content to record, and this interview is no exception. In this interview, Prasanna describes how he was diagnosed with triple PD in mid-2021 and at his worst was literally crawling around his house because he couldn't even stand. Nowadays, Prasanna reports that he is back to doing the things that he loves, including performing music in front of thousands of people. So he has come a long way and he is here to share his story of how he did it. So in this interview, we dig into how everything started, how he got his diagnosis, the things that didn't help, and the things that really did help, including many of the videos here on my channel. So here, without further ado, is Prasanna's story. If you have any questions or comments for us, of course, please drop them below. And I hope you enjoy hearing Prasanna's story as much as I did. Okay, Prasanna, thank you so much for joining me. Thank I you. am so excited to hear your whole story because I haven't heard your whole story yet. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me here. Um, I've been, yeah, I've been waiting for this day to come and, yeah. you know, to sit here in front of you feels uh, surreal. I'm still <laughs> trying to um, sort of um, grasp the whole thing. So mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, again, it's such a, I, I was telling you off air that for it's surreal for me too to see people come to life because I, I, I get to know people through the comments on my channel and just kind yeah. of through a distance. And then to have someone become a real whole person who's sitting in front of me telling me the whole story is, is so cool and such a privilege uh, for me. So awesome. I, these are my favorite. These are my absolute favorite, interviewing people who've recovered or are recovering. So uh, do you want to start by just telling us a little bit about you? Sure. I, so I'm, I'm uh, Prasanna. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, I live in Auckland in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I've been here for 21 years. I'm originally from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been working in real estate uh, for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've got my wife and my little boy who's uh, two years old. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So my family mostly they're they're all here in Auckland. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I know you've been dealing with this stuff for a while. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about how the symptoms started? You said it was in May 2021, right? So just yeah, about so, two years ago. Yeah, about yeah. two years ago. That's right. So May 2021. So mm -hmm. I was uh, selling a property of one of my um, facilitating uh, facilitating a sale of uh, mm -hmm. one of my clients and they were going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a pretty stressful uh, scenario. And for about five to six weeks, I used to get phone calls from the ex-husband uh, and he would be fully drunk, uh, you know, and abusing me on the phone for a couple of hours continuously. And at that point, I felt like um, I was feeling the stress, but I did not know exactly, I couldn't pinpoint and sort of um, describe my, my symptoms. And one day I was just sitting on my dining table playing mm -hmm. board games with uh, my parents and a uh, group of friends. And I felt this whole sensation where it was a non-spinning uh, dizziness and my whole face started to, I felt like flushed and uh, I thought I was going to have a medical event. You know, I just excused uh, myself from the table and I went upstairs and I just washed my face with cold water but it wasn't going away so I lied down after that and I just felt my whole body like as if it's just a whole shift in uh, internally that I just could not understand mm -hmm. 
um, and then the next day, I I was going to go and do an open home for my uh, for my uh, listing, and I remember saying to my wife, I said, I I, I just cannot walk. Y you know, I I can't walk, and I'm feeling a gravitational pull on all directions. And then uh, it got worse. The more I thought about it, it got worse and worse and worse. And next thing you know, I was at the at the hospital. And the doctor, uh, I recall the doctor saying to me, hey, uh, you know, it looks like you had a full-blown panic attack. Um, you know, why don't we put you on some anti-anxiety uh, medication like lorazepam? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was the start of it. And it just went downhill from there. Oh, my gosh. Oh. It went downhill from there. It got even worse. It got even worse, yeah. 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 So so what happened next? So you you went there. They said, okay, here's some anti-anxiety medication. Go live your life. Did they recommend further tests? What did they do? Uh, they recommended I do blood tests. Um, mm -hmm. And he said it's just a probably a panic attack you know mm -hmm. and i've got a lot of respect for the uh, doctors the gps you know they, they did try to help me sure. but i think they they didn't quite understand what was going on as well so i started to research online and i found a dizziness and balance uh, center in auckland mm -hmm. um, so i approached them to go and have a chat with them mm -hmm. so uh, I tried everything, you know, I can name A to Z of all the methods I've tried. I went to Dizziness and Balance uh, Center and that's where the physiotherapist for the first time, he did all sorts of tests uh, with me and then he suggested that, you know, I may have uh, PPPD. Okay. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> at that time I was like, okay, what what's PPPD? I didn't understand. And... Uh, it just got worse uh, pretty much. You know, I was desperate for answers. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with uh, trying to find information and answers online. I could not find anything. Um, mm -hmm. So I went to different GPs. I went to an Ayurvedic doctor. I went to mm -hmm. an acupuncturist. I went to a chiropractor. I went to a breathing specialist. Mm -hmm. I spent time with the dizziness and balance uh, center. Um, I went to a naturopath. Um, so I felt like I went in one full circle mm -hmm. before I realized I had to look within. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we're going to get to that because I know that's the part people really want to understand. I'm just curious before we go there. So this dizziness and balance center, did they do other vestibular tests? It sounds like you saw the physio. Did, did they do any other tests? Um, like more objective tests where you saw a neurologist or an ear, nose and throat physician? Yep. I saw an ENT doctor. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he did a few tests with me and he said, oh, you're fine. Um, okay. I saw mm -hmm. a neurologist. He did all sorts of tests uh, with me and he said, you seem to fit the symptoms of PPPD. Okay. And that was echoed uh, through the d dizziness and balance uh, center. They did a lot of, um, I think like some some vestibular tests. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I did go and see an audiologist, and my my hearing was perfect, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And and the report came to the physio at the dizziness and balance uh, center. So he did a few mm -hmm. uh, impulse uh, tests, and you know got me to do a few vestibular exercises as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember his his uh, one thing that sort of um, made. A bit of sense is he said everyone sways after all we are 70 percent uh water right so mm -hmm. everyone sways it's just that your volume is sitting at 11 at the moment right right <laughs> right yeah. exactly like what i taught i say i say that sometimes in, in some of my videos that your brain turns the volume control up like you're yeah. noticing it more but it's correct. it is normal to sway yeah correct yeah yeah but it's it's interesting sometimes how how when it's communicated to you in a very medical way, it doesn't necessarily bring insight about how to get better from it. No, no, he's he um I think he's he helped me with the diagnosis a bit, you know, and he suggested that I may have a PPPD, 
mm-hmm. and then it's just off you go and live your life. Right, right. You know, so I, I, I emailed him a few times. I said, I'm really desperate. This is what I'm experiencing. I could not do even basic things. Um, if I can just uh, mention a little bit of them. Absolutely. You know. Please. Um, yeah. What were things I like? Do, I could not do the dishes. I could not uh, bathe my son. Um, I could not brush my teeth. Mm-hmm. I could not even stand in the shower. I um, And I could not even dine on the dining table. I used to eat with my plate right up here. Mm. This and my mates' uh, friends will be sitting around me, and they'll be wondering why I had my plate up here, you know. And it was just, it was just. Uh, so you didn't have not... to look up and down. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at times I just did not want to get out of bed. You know, I I wake up in the morning and I'm so um, frightened to put my feet on the floor mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I I knew that. At any point, the dizziness would kick in, mm-hmm. and it would just disrupt my whole day. Mm-hmm. So I went for months uh, living, living like that. You know, mm. um, if I can just add a couple more things, um, I used to, in my line of work in real estate, I sit in front of people. Mm-hmm. So I would sit in front of my client, and I would feel the dizziness just hitting me. And next thing you know, I have to ask my client if I can lie down on their sofa. Mm. You know, so I started to avoid seeing people. I started to avoid uh, seeing my my clients, and I started to see them on Zoom calls because I could not see them in person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the lowest point for me was in December two thousand and twenty one, where I went three weeks with with no sleep. And and that was <laughs> that was that was uh, just something else. Yeah, know? yeah. And you mentioned also, so so I'm just going to recap because people, yes, need to hear their own stories in your story. So you had this un- unsteadiness, you had the swaying, you had the fear, and you had. Yeah. Dizziness from morning till night. You know, you knew it was going to be there all day. You couldn't yeah. sit in front of people because yeah. suddenly it would come and hit you. You couldn't look up and down from your plate at dinner. And then you also mentioned at some point, even sitting in front of a screen was impossible, right? Yeah, I I love watching. Uh, you know, you you obviously in America you call it soccer. I, mm-hmm. I love watching soccer, and mm-hmm. I've been watching soccer all my life. I could not even watch. Uh, mm-hmm. TV and watch my favorite team uh, play mm-hmm. just got me so anxious and so worked up and I just uh, I just could not handle it mm. you know and, and at some point I thought okay I can't watch TV anymore so I stopped watching TV yeah yeah, yeah. so your world just got smaller and smaller and smaller you uh, but from what you said earlier you you went on the merry-go-round of seeing all the alternative providers you could and no yes. one could offer you anything really that was gonna that was helping no the the closest i got was the natural path he gave me some mm-hmm. uh stressed uh tablets mm-hmm. some tablets to deal with nervous exhaustion mm-hmm. uh nervous uh anxiousness mm-hmm. um you know i was taking all sorts of tablets, but they were all natural. I refused to, it's just my own, um, uh, you know, my, just on my, my own way, I just refused to take uh, medication mm-hmm. um, because I thought with my, with my son and my family, you know, I just didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to go down a different pathway. I just would not even recognize myself. So mm-hmm. I, I was uh, recommended to go on antidepressants mm-hmm. and I refused uh, to go on antidepressants. I thought if I look within myself, I truly, truly believe we have the ability to deal, uh, to, to heal within ourselves, And that's mm-hmm. something I'm, I've been trying to advocate for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, it's, 
It's so hard. It's so hard. And I'm so glad you said that. A again, I, I have no judgment at all uh, for people need to do what they need to do. But it's very important for people to hear if they feel the same way that medications are not necessary for, for everyone. Again, yeah. I'm not saying that they have to follow your path, but that path is, is, is it exists. It exists. Correct. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So actually that brings me back for just a moment. So your son, he must have been, if he's two now, he must have been born right before all this started. When was he born? He was born in uh, October uh, 2020. Um, okay. Oh, my gosh. During and, the pandemic. and Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. During okay. The pandemic. Yeah. Okay. This is making even more sense. So let's let's recap. So your your child was born in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. And I I'm not I'm not as familiar with what it was like in New Zealand, but I know there was for a while a policy of zero COVID. And yes. I imagine there was some stress associated with that. So there's that whole context. And then right. you had the work stress come up more acutely in the in the early part of 2021. So do you do you look back at that now and say that that whole all of those things may have led up to this nervous system crash that you had? I would say so. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think uh, being a new father was uh, one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but having a certain responsibility that I've got to work yeah. extra hard to support the family yeah, and also uh, take care of my family emotionally. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife did bri brilliantly. I mean, during the whole COVID time, she could mm -hmm. not, it, it was just both of us, you know, we could not have uh, family, oh. uh, you know, and uh, with all the rest restrictions with lockdown, there was yeah. a lot of things that we could not uh, do that we would have liked to do. Um, so, yeah, I was working seven days a week, uh, you know, and in between trying to manage things at home uh, with the lack of sleep and disrupted sleep, you know, things like that. I guess it all bottled up. And I would also say uh, it is probably emotions that's been bottled up since childhood, really. So when, uh, yeah, I, I don't, uh, when, when I recall the conversation with my client who was drunk on the phone, it took me back to my childhood days because I did experience uh, a bit of trauma when I was a, a child, you know, with uh, uh, alcohol abuse and things like that, you know. So uh, it was everything was just coming back to me at the wrong place at the wrong time, oh. and it started to hit me uh, really, really hard. Wow! Thank you so much for sharing. Again, I know it's it may be a little intimidating to sh to share those details about yourself, but it's so important for people to understand stress, it's not just from the outside, it's what happens on the inside that matters. And yeah. when you have a prior experience with something like that, it's going to have a completely different effect on you than some person who's never had that kind of experience. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I can only it. Well, so, but you didn't know that at the time. So, okay. I guess now I know you've been wanting to talk about this and I've held us off because I wanted to make sure we covered what your experience was like till sure, December, sure. but we'll come back to, to what it was like for you to find out about this connection, the stress connection. But you said your worst time was in December of 2021. So what happened after that? Yeah. December, 2021 was, uh, I, I would say the lowest point in my mm -hmm. life, really. Um, the three weeks of no sleep, sleep or very little sleep, I must say, that was a, a real shock to my system because that is where I realized that my there was some sort of hyper alertness going on in my body. Every time I tried to sleep, I felt like an electrical uh, signal or some, some sort of sensation going through my body mm. and it will just wake me up just 
sort of to remind me that it's trying to keep me safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and and I got so I I got so desperate. I I spent hours and hours and hours trying to sleep. I started to watch uh, videos on YouTube regarding how to relax and go to sleep. Nothing was working. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to ask for sleeping tablets. Mm-hmm. So I went to the doctor and I got a couple of sleeping tablets and guess what? It did not work. Mm. <laughs> it did not yeah. work. And, and at that point, truly, I must uh, say that I was I had started to have suicidal thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I, I went, we went to a friend's house for dinner and I just could not walk. Mm-hmm. I could not walk. I was, um, and I came home um, because it was just a neighbor's house and I, I left my wife and my son there. I came home and I said to myself, I, I said, I cannot live like this. I cannot, I can't do this anymore. You know, at, at, uh, and at some point in December, I, I do recall myself having to crawl up the stairs because I could not walk. Mm. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it was it was quite a tough uh, tough time, and that's where I, I I think I learned about myself even more than I have ever known, really. So yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. I'm it, again, it's it's not a consolation. Like, it's not like, oh, it's okay that that happened. But I'm so glad that you're putting this out there because there are others who are in that position right now who are going to listen to this and know that you're not there anymore. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, on that note, so what, when did things start to change? What happened? Tell me, tell me about that. Yeah, so if I if I were to fast forward, say uh, December to uh, February, March, mm-hmm. I would say it was pretty much the same thing. It was just a very vicious cycle. Mm. Uh, you know, every day I would look forward to going to sleep because I mm. knew I had to do some uh, errands, you know, for my son, um, do the necessary things. But I just look forward to uh, just lying down in bed every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, one of my, a close friend of mine, she said to me, hey, I, I came across this contact and his name is Rias. Mm-hmm. Why don't you speak to him? Mm-hmm. So reluctantly, I called uh, Rias because I thought, oh, who's going to help me with PPPD? You know, I gave up hope anyway. Mm-hmm. I recall, he said, okay, let's, let's speak on a, on a one hour con, uh, let's speak on a one hour free call, right? So I mm-hmm. took, made the most of it. I, I called him and he listened. He listened to all that I was going through. No judgment. He just listened. And just having someone to listen to me was massive. Because I, it was so hard for me to tell. Everyone look at me, and I look, I look so normal. But inside, I was just shaking, you know, and like all sorts of turbulent things that was happening in my mind. I just needed someone to listen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he said something that, uh, you know, I was just recalling and telling him last night that how grateful I am to him. And he said to me, "I can help you to get better." Mm-hmm. You know, and I said, okay, I needed to hear that. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first thing we started to do was deep breathing. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just deep breathing because anyone can sit down and just take a few deep breaths and say, hey, I've done deep breathing. You know, it's more about understanding what deep breathing can do for you and how important my opinion is that our bodies are not meant to live this kind of stressful life, you know, and that mm-hmm. our well-being and how we manage stress is very, very important. Mm-hmm. So it was going back to basics for me. Mm-hmm. So the deep breathing taught me to look within and just calm the central nervous system. Mm-hmm. And then we went through that 
whole uh, program of calming the nervous system. And mm -hmm. the words he would use is that, you know, you speak to your amygdala, mm -hmm. and assure mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'm okay. I'm safe. Mm -hmm. One thing that I learned um, when I, the first thing I said to him is my, my, di my dizziness is just too strong. And he said, hey, it's called the dizziness from now. It's not my dizziness. Once you start to dis disassociate yourself from the dizziness, you will not give it an identity and it will start to get better for you. And it did. Yes. Yes. To speak to that, that's why I very respectfully uh, ask people to stop identifying with a particular diagnosis. And I, I tell people it is important to get the diagnosis because you yeah. want to make sure there's nothing physically wrong. Correct. And there's huge relief in, okay, I know what this is. So, so all, all about that. But then when people start to use language that identifies with the, with the condition, with the, with the illness, even saying positive things like I am a vestibular warrior, which again is a beautiful sentiment, but That's you're right. saying that you're the def that you, the definition of you is as this patient, this person, um, not a person with a condition, but this is who you are. And uh, again, I, I cannot more highly agree with you on that. And again, I, I say that in the most loving and respectful way to people who who have grabbed onto this because that's all that they've had. They've like you, they've been lost and finding an identity like that has been life changing for them. But then there's also a time to let that go and say, I know what this is. I can let go of my dizziness and make it the dizziness. And it's that's not right. It's not me. It's it's a thing that's with me right now. That's right, and that uh, that was where I experienced a, a, a change in my mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I used to say this that vestibular exercises is great. Mm -hmm. It helps you to build confidence. It helps you to realign your balance and restore your balance mm -hmm. but equally i was doing vestibular exercises three times a day i was gonna ask so oh. you were doing vrt <laughs> okay yeah yeah and but equally important is to learn to change your mindset for the better mm -hmm. um i would do vestibular exercises felt i'm getting better go around in one circle and then it hits me again Mm -hmm. um you know vestibular exercises i mean when when you're in hyper alert i guess you over rely on your eyesight mm -hmm. so what i used to do is i used to blindfold myself find a safe place and just walk around and feel in mm -hmm. terms of trying to activate the other senses in my body mm -hmm. um and that got me better to a certain degree but any little setback will hit me so hard right it's like I it said, wipes it away. Wipes it away. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. working on my mindset was the a very important component. Mm -hmm. So we started to go into guided meditation mm -hmm. and and then we started to explore my childhood, some of the trauma and some of the pain that I went through. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's all bottled up from the past. Mm -hmm. It was important to sort of speak to the inner child, speak to myself mm -hmm. from 20, 30 years back and just try to, I wouldn't say solve, but it's more of an assurance that, hey, look where I am now. I am okay. Mm -hmm. I'm safe. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. You know, everything will be okay. So it's just like um, going through that with uh, Rias in depth. Mm -hmm. Help me to just shift completely. Wow. And I must tell you, uh, Dr. Yonit, um, I'm a musician. I play guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, in March 2022, I went to perform and I knew my parts. I knew what I was supposed to do, but I could not go to the stage. 
my bandmates had to carry me to the stage. I had mm. to sit down. I had to wear sunglasses. And the light sensitivity was too strong. And I had to perform that night. And I thought, this is me forever. You know, this is what I have to put up with. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it got better. It got better and better. And October 2022, I was performing in front of 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. And I had no issues at all. Mm. Amazing. It was such a, a, a shift. Amazing. When did you start working with Riaz? Um, March 2022. Okay. About a year back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And <laughs> just if anyone is curious who this Riaz character is, um, I will link to his website and information in the video oh. description. Um, I actually, I, I mentioned to you before we went on air, I'm going to be meeting with him to hear more about what he does. But it, it's very much in line with the things that I talk right. about, nervous system regulation, That's stress, it. mindset, and like you said, not everyone wants to hear this, but the way we react to stress is the result of patterns that were set in motion in our childhoods. And it's worth looking back at those if we want to undo some of those patterns. So right. talk about all that too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when did you find my channel? When was that? That was uh, around the same time, actually. So I, I have to say, I'm, I'm, you know, Rias was one thing, but mm -hmm. Steady Coach uh, is is one that really helped me through the tough times. It was March 2021 where I was, uh, you know, desperate for answers. Mm -hmm. When I came across the Steady Coach and I saw your channel, March 2022, you mean, right? Uh, March 2022. Yes, okay. Correct. Just want yeah. to make sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I got hooked onto it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I obviously subscribed and the 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 information that you provide, the assurance and for me to be able to relate to it was very important because mm -hmm. sometimes you feel alone, your world gets smaller and you think, Am I the only one that's experiencing this? And then mm -hmm. you reach out and you look and, uh, you know, the steady coach, the content was just su superb. You know, you've, you've dedicated a lot of your time, your energy and all that passion into the material that you produce. And for someone like myself who's picked it up, I've done your course as well. And I feel the course is very, very important, especially the bits about journaling, um, you know, and, and also doing the course and listening to your podcast. All that helped me to move forward and know that I'm not alone in this. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to say thank you. Like, like I was saying offline to you, you know, that when I see those recovery stories and they are all very powerful in their own way um, that I thought one day I need to be here sharing my success story because I want to be able to inspire others as well um, and help others to get better as well. So, yes. Yeah. And yours, it's, I, I think they're the most important things that I do sharing the stories this way. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, this from the work I do, but it's part of my, it's part of my, uh, I, I guess a little bit of a crusade <laughs> that I, I feel like people need access to this information for free. And I, yeah. I, I want to make sure that no one anywhere has to go through this without being able to access the information and being able to access stories like this that that show people who were able to get better met some on their own some with the assistance of a coach like you had but that it's not it doesn't have to be a really horribly expensive and awful and heavily medicated and and yeah. just a management journey where we're just trying to make the symptoms better there's actually a healing a recovery very true. journey mm -hmm. very true Yes, I yeah. agree. Yeah. So it lined yeah. up. So it sounds like 
Riaz and I may have been saying things in slightly different ways, but it sounds like we really lined up the things we were saying made sense to you together. Yeah, it goes hand in hand, mm -hmm. put it that way. I think um, a lot of, uh, it's very important to keep an open mind because it's, it's mm -hmm. very easy to listen to one of your podcasts and say, oh, that's not me. I'm not going to get better. Right. You know? Oh, absolutely. The, the truth is you can. You can, but you have to look within yourself. Um, yeah, that's hard for people to hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, can you just please find something to cut off of me or like some medicine that's going to fix me? And it's, yeah. I, I, I tell people if I find a solution like that, they'll be the first to know. I will release one final video and I will retire and go do something else. <laughs> no problem with that. Yeah. But, but in the absence of that, there is no quick fix. There's no magic solution. And the only one who can fix you is you. Correct. Correct. That's I all agree. there is. I agree. I Every um, milestone I hit, so for example, uh, the concert I did in front of 5,000 people, uh, or three weeks ago going to Ed Sharon concert, yes, being with sixty thousand people, yes, it's just little milestones like that where you tick off and you say, "Hey, I'm going to keep marching on mm -hmm. because this is the new me. Mm -hmm. It's the new normal, and the difference is now I've learned to listen to my body a bit more mm -hmm. and pay attention if I'm feeling a bit stressed." Then is to identify, is to journal, is to write down, you know, what I'm feeling, how did I get there, uh, and to make sure that I deal with it and not let it bottle up so much. Would um, you speak to that a little bit? Because I think this is something people get confused about. So when you say deal with it, so sometimes there are inevitable stressors on the outside. You've got yeah. a client who's needy or the baby's sick or, you know, so... What does it mean to you to deal with stress if you can't yeah. fix the outside? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, so one one thing is the mindset to to understand that when it's not within your control, you should not be taking the whole burden on your shoulders. That's the mindset uh, shift that I had to work with. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's problem is your problem. Mm -hmm. um, the second part is going back to basics, the consistency of uh, doing things like meditation and uh, deep breathing, because what it allows you to do is that it allows you to focus a bit more and think the bigger picture and tackle life stresses in a different way. Mm -hmm. So instead of being very uh, instantaneous, uh, you know, like, like, trying to deal with it as it comes, you take a step back, think about what actually you're experiencing, mm -hmm. possibly write down all the feelings, uh, emotions that you are experiencing. And yeah, just, just balancing between mindset and uh, the basic stuff like deep breathing and guided meditation. I think that mm -hmm. goes a long way. So, what I'm hearing is it's not necessarily about using those tools to fix stress or anxiety. It's it's realizing that it's not all of you. So when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling stressed out, it's kind of like what you were saying. It's no longer my dizziness. It's the dizziness. So it's, yeah. it's getting some space between you and the stressful situation and holding space for yourself and dare I say, being compassionate to yourself and giving yeah. yourself permission to slow down and correct feel whatever it is that you're feeling, that helps with the stress. That helps, yes, yes. Yeah, it's the opposite of what people think might help, like which is to fix it on the outside. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's work in progress for me, but mm -hmm. the, yeah, but it, it's helped me, especially now I don't, uh, feel the dizziness as intense as before. Mm -hmm. I do feel it sometimes when I'm stressed, you know, and that's where I got to take a step back mm -hmm. and then do the things that we just uh, spoke about. Mm -hmm. And then it helps me to manage it better. Right. 
Right. Well, and we, as we talked about when we were corresponding, yeah. we're you're still you're still recovering right now. You said you're at about 90, 95% right now, yeah. somewhere yeah. in there. So yeah. occasionally those sensations pop up, but it sounds like it's it's not stopping you from doing anything anymore. Correct. Correct. So every time I ex experience a setback, it's very important to ask myself, you know, how far I've come and mm -hmm. all the success stories I've helped, uh, sorry, I've experienced um, and how do how did I get to where I am now? Mm -hmm. It's very important to acknowledge that. So when I experience a set uh, a setback, it doesn't set me back anymore. Actually, it, mm -hmm. it just helps me to move forward even more. So mm -hmm. the way I see it is that if I experience a setback, it's an opportunity for me to become even stronger, as opposed to moving me backwards. Thank you for saying this. Uh, people have asked me because sometimes the people I interview are long past or they're, they just, it's all in the rear view mirror and they don't, they don't recall or they, they don't remember the ups and downs as much. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is that it's not that you don't still have ups and downs sometimes. Obviously it sounds like the downs are, are not nearly what they were before, first of all. But right. when you, but that it's, you've, you've not only accepted them, you've started to embrace them as an opportunity. You don't view them as a setback. You view them as this is, this is, I'm still working on this. This is an opportunity for me to build more resilience. Correct. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's, 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 I think the key it, people ask me. So how do I know when I'm recovering, like really recovering, how do I know that I'm not going to have a horrible dip and then it's when you don't view a dip as anything more yeah. than just an opportunity when it's not a, when it's not something to be feared anymore when you know you can handle it correct um yeah one of the coping mechanisms i started to develop was to expect that these setbacks can happen and it takes a while for you to understand that mm -hmm. but once you have this mindset that these things can happen. Mm -hmm. When it happens, you're like, ah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to take a step back. Mm -hmm. and I need to reflect. I need to go back to basics. Mm -hmm. March on. Yeah. So what is your self-care routine like when, when you do have a, a when you go through a dip? What do you what do you do for yourself? You said back to basics. So you spend a little more time calming your nervous system. What yeah. else do you do? Um, I would say a big, big part of me is the guided meditation. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, last week I performed uh, 21 songs in three hours in front of a crowd of 300 people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, prior to going on stage, perhaps an hour or two before I go uh, to the stage, I was starting to feel all those symptoms, you know, like what if I feel dizzy? What if I uh, feel like I want to faint and all that stuff? So mm -hmm. I, re I recall at that time, I, I just said to my band members, I'm going to go for a walk, you know, and just go into nature, ground yourself, walk bare feet on, on grass, for example, sit down, absorb the atmosphere, uh, I did a bit of uh, guided meditation, say, for 20, 20 minutes mm -hmm. just to refocus myself. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of self-assurance as well, you know, that goes in my mind at that time. Hey, I've been playing guitar for three, uh, 30 years. You know, why am I doing this? This is my passion. So you start to give all this self-talk to yourself and mm -hmm. a lot to do with self-care. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think that self-care was missing for a long time. So it sounds like you're not going, oh my God, I got to get rid of this sensation because I'm going to, I'm going to, I can't do this on stage. So you're not doing that. You're doing no. exactly the opposite. You're reassuring yourself. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
once you yeah. shift your focus and you and you assure yourself hey i'm you know i'm a good musician i'm here to play in front of an audience i'm here to make them happy then the symptoms and whatever emotions that you were experiencing they all start to go to the back end or they start mm -hmm. to balance properly mm -hmm. and then you start to feel good about yourself mm -hmm. um and and then half an hour later i went back to my bandmates and say hey let's do this you know let's mm -hmm. let's go for it mm -hmm. and it helps it helps yes and and i'm and i'm i love how you're talking about this too because when people hear this they're going to hear you doing this and they're going to be like wow what a wonderful way for him to care for himself but then if they found themselves in that same situation they would shame themselves why mm. can't i handle this why can't i you know overwhelm oh i shouldn't have to self care i used to be able to do this without having to care for myself and as you and i were talking about a little bit off air as well i you can only get away with not caring for yourself for so long. The bill yeah. comes due at some point. And Correct. we were talking about how it's a great skill and it's one that's going to serve you for the rest of your life. So you may as well start now and not necessarily have it be about symptoms, but about just taking care of yourself in general. Yes. I feel uh, I don't I don't recall if you were speaking this on air or off air. I was just saying that uh, I I don't think our bodies are meant to go through all these stresses. Right. You know, it's it's so learning how to cope with them and learning to basically go back to basics. I, I pretty much that's that's very very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm wondering. So if it's okay. I, I'd love to ask a little bit culturally because you're you're coming from multiple cultural backgrounds here. And yep. it sounds like you kind of had a unique mindset coming into this anyway. But what was it like for you to realize I have to uh, breathe and calm my nervous system and give myself self-care and talk about my feelings? Was that was that like what? or was that did that make sense to you when you started to do it? Oh, that's a good question. I it did not feel uh, normal at first, mm -hmm. um, but that's why having someone like Rias to be able to express and talk to, mm -hmm. um, you know, when when I was at my lowest point, a few people said to me, "Why don't you speak to a therapist?" And I thought, mm -hmm. "Why? I'm okay. You know, why do why do I need to speak to a therapist?" Mm -hmm. But when you speak to a therapist and you open up, you realize how much you've bottled up all these years. Yeah. So from a culture perspective, I think, you know, it's to, to basically lower down your gates mm -hmm. and keep an open mind mm -hmm. and to be able to speak to someone that you can trust and be able to, to pour all your feelings out um yeah you can't you can't but I, I our body is not meant to bottle everything up especially it's not. In no it's not and well and that's why i have a problem with oh gosh and people are probably so tired of hearing me say this but uh, with with therapy that's just cognitive or just behavioral where people are only telling people to work on mindset and as we've talked about mindset is a huge part of this. So I'm not saying don't work mm -hmm. on mindset, but there there's a huge emotional piece here too that just can't be ignored. We can't change mindset as effectively if we're not working on the roots of the mindset. And yeah. to me that's emotional and that unfortunately I've worked with many people who have seen therapists and didn't didn't get as far as they would have liked because there was just the focus on doing and doing exposure and, you know, behavior, but not what you're talking about, pouring your feelings out, letting, opening the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that that's a very, very important uh, mm -hmm. component towards uh, recovery. Yeah. It has I, been for you. Yes. Yeah. 100%. 
Yeah. 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 So it's not just from me. It's from a legitimate expert who's going, <laughs> who's going through this right now. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm also, I would love to ask you another cultural related question. Um, I've noticed that among my clients, there are many people who immigrated from one country to another. Mm. I, I, I feel like people who have immigrated are overrepresented among the people that I work with. And I'm wondering if you had any thoughts on that, if you had any done any thinking or exploring of your own or any, any insights that you'd like to share about that, what that's like to be an immigrant and how that might play into this. Yeah, I I do recall when I first uh, migrated with my family to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my parents pro uh, they they thought that was the right thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. an opportunity came out in from a work sense, and the whole family migrated. But what it meant for me was I lost that connection with my friends at school. Mm. Prior to that, I was living in different countries. You know, I lived in Canada for uh, three years as well. Mm -hmm. um, I shifted school 11 times. Oh, my gosh. And the last school I was at, I built really solid friendships, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that was broken when I had to leave uh, for New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And that was very difficult because I came to uh, New Zealand. I did, first of all, I didn't want to be here. I didn't mm -hmm. want to be here. I didn't understand why I was here. So I mm -hmm. spent a lot of my uni life uh, being alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, my best friend was my, you know, at that time you you had a CD, earphones. That was my best friend, you know, and I was mm -hmm. listening to music that was, uh, you know, probably uh, like if you listen to bands like Linkin Park, for example, mm -hmm. when you read into the lyrics now, it yeah. was a lot of pain, a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and that was what I was feeding into my soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so being an immigrant, it's it's not uh, it's not easy, and uh, it basically you had to try to fit in. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you're missing home, you're missing your friends, mm -hmm. but you got to move forward. You got to build new connections. Mm -hmm. It took me a while before I got to where I am uh, today. You know, so. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm 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 uh, originally from Malaysia, and mm -hmm. uh, about a month back, I organized a a uh, like a networking event for fellow Malaysians. I had like two hundred and fifty mm -hmm. people turn up, you know. And mm -hmm. now it's all about embracing where I live, embracing uh, the opportunities that present itself, and it it took me a while to get there. But I can understand a lot of people immigrate and it's not easy. Yeah, even when it's a happy immigration, even when it's a, yeah. we wanted to move to this new place. What you were just saying, I think the key is is in there. You, you mentioned this event that you organized. I've said this, I know it sounds cliche, but the, the medicine for Triple PD is connection connection yes. to ourselves and connection to others. And again, I, if if you're new to my channel and you hear me say that and you're rolling your eyes, you can roll your eyes. It's okay. I, I'm i okay. much more willing to say things now that I wouldn't have said when I it first started, but yeah. it's, it really is. And I'm, I'm going to say this in a, at a nervous system level, the opposite yeah. of fight or flight is con con being connected. And again, Correct. connection with ourselves, connection with others. And I think that immigration disconnects even when it's positive even when there's so many reasons to do it it can cause a disconnection both with ourselves and those that we care about and love and yes. i also immigrated as a as a child so i speak yeah. from authority here as well oh. um but i i think that's why i see it i think it adds another disconnection in people's lives that makes them more vulnerable to this yes. nervous system overload. 100%. I think you've nailed it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I see it so much. I It was like hitting me in the face. I couldn't not see it when I see so many people who've gone through this particular experience. Yeah. So it's in, it's insight that I've gained through just having seen it over and over. And it, observing it. Yeah. 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 All right. So it sounds to me like you're living a full life. You are co in a completely different place from where you were when everything started and then at your lowest point. So what's what are some of your goals now? Do you have any goals that you're working toward? Yep. I goals, I mean, in terms of uh in terms of life. So yeah. Life. Life, self, whatever. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot to look forward to, put it that way. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. I haven't had the the time or the chance to to reflect too much on what I want to do. But for me, uh, at the moment is uh, day to day, taking mm -hmm. every day as it comes. And uh, as I was saying earlier, it's more about keeping an open mind, mm -hmm. uh, keeping a, an open mind, knowing that setbacks will come. But it's the way you respond, the way you move forward, the way you deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a lot of goals, uh, you know, in, in life, personal goals, uh, financial goals. I guess the one that I really want to be able to accomplish this year is I, I love playing uh, soccer and I want to play again. Yeah. Just, even if it's just a casual, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kick about with uh, friends, mm -hmm. I just want to get on the field and just uh, play. So um, it's just little things like that that I'm – that's probably the only thing that I've not tried yet. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I can pretty much do it now. Mm -hmm. um, so just setting little goals for myself and mm -hmm. taking them off one by one is probably the bigger picture that I'm looking at at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I, I'm pretty sure you could just do it now. Like if you... If you hang up this call movie. and just go do it, you you could you <laughs> yeah. could I'll add a little addendum. By the way, he emailed me afterwards and said, "Yep, I did that <laughs> after yeah. I got off the call." I, I did I did do a little bit last week uh, when I was yeah. playing with my my dog. Oh, you know, I, I kicked the ball yeah. and she ran and she <laughs> chased for it, and yeah, it I was like, okay, if I can do this with uh, this two, I mean, if I can do this with my 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 dog, mm -hmm. um, you know. I can play a team spot again and, yes. and I'm looking forward to it. Agreed. Okay. So before we finish, I'd love to know if you have any advice, any words of wisdom, any thoughts yeah. you can share with anyone else who's going through this right now. Yeah. Um, a, a big one is to, you know, it's a very cliche to say this, but don't give up, you know, don't give up. I, I am part of a few forums online and I, I, I hear the stories. And the important thing for me to say is that I, I hear you, I, I hear what you're saying, but don't give up. You know, there's a lot of resources, like the obviously the steady coach is uh, one of them. Um, and I've also seen the other side where, you know, I've seen online uh, community members saying, I've listened to a steady coach not working for me. Yeah. You've just got to open your mindset, uh, keep an open mind. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say go back to basics, don't give up, keep an open mind and look within yourself for some self-care as well. It's very, very important. Yeah. Um, and anyone that is uh, out there that's really struggling, I would say that, you know, I've been there at one point I could not walk and I've been to the emergency a couple of times myself as well. So I've been there and it's possible. It, you can get better. And I truly believe that I will hundred percent recover. And, you know, I hope to be able to inspire others to recover as well. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and I also think it's telling that we're having this interview now when, because you're not, although again, in terms of sensations, you're 
a few percentage points away from where you want to be, it's not the centerpiece of your life anymore. You're living your life the way you want to live your life. And so yes, that's important for people to hear that they don't need to wait till they're at a specific point to start living again. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and for helping me navigate the crazy time differences with my <laughs> clock moving forward next week and then your clock moving forward a few weeks from now. I was like, oh my gosh, I really <laughs> hope I got the right time difference. <laughs> so we, no, no, you, you've, you've we got figured it, it out. Uh, <laughs> you figured it out. Yeah. It's, uh, it out. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yonit Arthur. Like, I can't emphasize enough how much you mean to me. We've not met in person but how much you mean to me is I, I just, you know, you have, I'm sure you have inspired and you've helped a lot of people. Uh, someone like myself, I'm very, very grateful to you. I still listen to your podcasts uh, because every time I listen, I learn something new. I feel like you can never stop learning about your journey and all the material that you provide on, uh, on YouTube and, as, uh, what really um, helps me is the Spotify podcast. I, I love it. When I'm driving, I listen to it. So I just want to say thank you so, so, so much for everything you do. Oh, and it you're makes, so makes a huge uh, difference. You're so welcome. It is, I, I, it is like the biggest privilege to be able to do this. I, I just, it, it, it feels like I, I, I know this is cliche too, but it just feels like this is what I was born to do and yeah. uh, to put this out there in the world. And it is, I cannot tell you how much it means to me to, to meet you and to, to meet anyone who I've helped. I mean, it just, it's, it's the greatest gift that you could possibly give me spending an hour with me like this. I'm, I'm getting very emotional now. Thank you. It's <laughs> really, it's such a privilege. No, no, you, you deserve a lot of the credit, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm very thankful. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And again, folks, thank you for tuning in. And um, if you want to leave any questions or comments, please drop them below. I will leave Riaz's contact information in the sure. uh, video description. And Prasanna, thank you. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. And right. thank you for everything you do. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> you're so welcome. All right. Take care. You too. You too.